Hello and welcome to PMCLounge.com. Let's discuss the perform quantitative risk analysis process in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, after our discussion on qualitative risk analysis, you should have seen this coming, right? A quantitative risk analysis. This is also something which is useful. Now, here's the all important PGKA mapping for you. This is the risk management knowledge area. We are covering the planning process group and we are today talking about the perform quantitative risk analysis process. The previous process we have already covered, which reminds me if you are into reading articles, then first link in the description will take you to an article about perform quantitative risk analysis over at our official website pmclounge.com. So check that out if you are into reading articles rather than watching videos also second link in the description is going to take you to a playlist on youtube that contains every single video that we have done on project risk management the risk management knowledge area so check that out two very important links check them out and if you are looking to understand what is qualitative risk analysis which is actually important that you should know before talking about quantitative risk analysis then please do so by checking out the second link which will take you to the entire playlist all right let's get started okay so from the standpoint of a definition what is quantitative risk analysis this process is all about numerically analyzing the identified risks you have the risks identified already they are in your risk register which you have already created but here you are analyzing those risks from numerical standpoint so numerically is the keyword in the definition above so you might remember here about qualitative risk analysis if you have already gone over that article or the video that we have done on this topic previously now you might remember that we have used numbers in qualitative risk analysis as well when we were discussing the probability impact matrix remember we gave a certain value to probability a certain value to impact and p into i will give you the weight of the risk this is something that we have discussed so we since we have already used numbers in qualitative risk analysis what is it that quantitative is bringing new to the table? What is this numerically analyzing which we have not done in qualitative risk analysis? But here in quantitative risk analysis, you will also understand how much a risk will end up costing you. So we are talking about dollar terms here and that is where quantitative risk analysis stands out that is where it becomes more important than qualitative risk analysis because there we were just looking at the final value the final weight of the risk based on the probability and the impact here we will also have dollars about how much a risk is going to cost you so we make use of quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques here to come up with these Cost. So there are three such techniques that you should know from PMP standpoint and we are going to discuss all three of them in the coming slides. Number one is expected monetary value analysis. But before we discuss EMV expected monetary value that is it's important to note that EMV is just one of the tools and techniques of this process right we are talking about three techniques that we are discussing but those three techniques are only about analyzing the data there are other tools and techniques that revolve around data gathering so once you gather the data that's when you analyze it and data gathering these tools and techniques are something that we have discussed previously in other processes as well over at pmclounge.com we don't pay a lot of attention on the inputs tools and techniques and outputs unless and until they introduce a new concept that we have not studied so far so the concepts of data gathering the tools and techniques of data gathering are something that we have already discussed in the in the past in previous processes so we won't go over them again but since the new concepts introduced as part of this process 
revolve around the analyzing the data analyzing part so we are going to look at those three in this video also just like the perform qualitative risk analysis process the output of quantitative perform quantitative risk analysis process is also project document update so nothing much important from output standpoint okay let's get back to the expected monetary value analysis now so with the help of emv analysis you will be able to calculate the costs of all the paths you might take during the course of your project now the main method of emv analysis you should know from bmp exam perspective is decision tree analysis so this is a method of emv analysis which you should know from pmp standpoint and in decision tree analysis all you are going to do is you're going to draw out all the decisions you think you need to make while dealing with the project risks and what are their respective costs so if you have risk a and there are two paths that you can take which may have their own risks as well or which may not have their own risks how much is a going to cost how much if you take path b is going to cost and how much will be the cost of taking path c this is a decision tree analysis we will cover emv and decision tree in a future video soon so stay subscribed and if you haven't subscribed yet do so so then you can add all these numbers like i said i just drawn right if you're taking this path you can add all the numbers and this way you will be able to come up with what you need to spend on the decision making for the risks of your project before moving further i'd like to remind you all our pmp courseware articles and videos totally free are available on this link pmclounge.com slash pmp training important link check it out okay number two of the three techniques that we are discussing today is sensitivity analysis this is where you are going to look at one variable or just one risk factor in total isolation and then you are going to analyze the impact that this risk factor may have so let's say you want to do a sensitivity analysis of the risk of procurement delay you are procuring certain items for your project and there's a risk that you will have delay in procuring those items so if you want to do a sensitivity analysis of this risk you are only going to consider the delay it will have on your project you are not going to consider other risks that emerge out of this delay like the team resource cost that you might have to incur due to this so let's say you are procure for your large construction project you are procuring let's say bags of cement and they are 2000 in numbers so you are procuring 2000 bags of cement in an area which is prone to theft and that is why you have hired one security guard to make sure that those 2000 cement bags are not stolen none of them is stolen now if you have a delay in the procurement if you have the delay in delivery of those 2000 cement bags you cannot fire the security guard that you have hired right so you have an extra cost for this human resource this team resource that you need to incur when you are doing sensitivity analysis of the procurement delay the risk known as procurement delay when you are doing sensitivity analysis for this you are not going to consider the extra cost that your project will have to incur that's the whole idea around sensitivity analysis and tornado diagrams are generally used to look at a project's sensitivity to only one risk factor which is procurement delay in this case so there's a concept called tornado diagrams you don't really have to know them in detail to clear your pmp exam but these are the diagrams that are used to perform sensitivity analysis 
and number three is modeling and simulation so monte carlo analysis tops the list when we talk about simulation anywhere in your pmp studies wherever you will find simulation you will find monte carlo analysis there and this analysis is basically a tool that can randomize the outcomes of project risks it randomizes the outcomes of anything that you enter right so in this case it is project risk so it is going to randomize the outcomes of the project risks and even the probabilities of their occurrence this is going to help you get a good sense of how you are going to handle the risks what are all the possibilities that can happen in terms of the outcomes of these risks so that's where monte carlo analysis comes in handy question for this video where are all these calculations and outcomes documented can you answer this question so we have seen a lot of calculations and outcomes here right we have talked about monte carlo analysis we have talked about how a decision tree can be created where is all this documented which document is used to basically document or note down all these calculations and outcomes let me know in the comments definitely looking forward to your answers i hope this topic was clear that's all that we had in this video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload new content and don't forget to smash that like button it helps us stay motivated and create more free content for you also check out the website pmclounge.com your number one free pmp resource thank you